Bentley. Tries the outside again. Oh, yes, John Bentley. Stripped two men there. It's still going. He's beaten three and four. If he goes all the way, it will be a magnificent try. It was never a consideration, the Lions. In fact, I had a phone call from Frank Cotton in January of 97, and I knew Fran from old. I'd been at Sale nine years earlier, and Fran had quite simply said, Bentos, how are you doing? It's Fran. I said, yeah. I said, quick question, are you available to tour with the Lions to South Africa? And I lied because I said yes, and because technically I wasn't. I was contracted to play professional rugby league in the summer. He said, well, with all due respect, you're running right in the second division. We're going to try and get you a run with, with England, England B perhaps, and leave it with me. Anyway, he came back to me about three weeks later and said, Bentos, the news I'm going to deliver comes as very little surprise to either of us. Uh, they won't touch England. You know, and I was 30 year old as well. That, that's something to remember that, you know, England should be looking to the future, whereas the Lions was there and then. He said, but it's down to you. You know, we're watching you as to whether you get selected. Amazingly, yeah, I, I got picked for, for the greatest team in the world, without a doubt. And we travelled down to Weybridge in Surrey, uh, where we spent the week trying to become a team. Nobody, but nobody gave us a chance. Nobody in South Africa, not many in the UK, I don't think really gave us a chance. But by the time we'd finished our week together in Weybridge and got on that plane, we were determined that we were going to give it our best shot and be successful. Ultimately, we we'd 13 games on our tour. Ultimately, as a player, you want to play on a Saturday afternoon because the, the test played on a Saturday. And I managed to get into the Saturday team and played. I had a shocker. I had a shocker and was replaced midway through the second half. And actually sat on the bench and it was a, it was a, I'd always been quite choppy me as well. And, you know, quite jovial. I'm a big believer in life. Even in moments of adversity, if you can smile, we'll be okay. I actually just sat down and thought to myself, you need to shut your mouth now and play some rugby. Because I was here to play, I was there to play rugby, not to be the team joker and what have you. And then in the midweek, I managed to get my tour back on track, but I'd, I'd gone off tour from the Saturday. We'd lost at the Blue Bulls and I'd been, and I was dropped. I'd been replaced, second half, I was back in the midweek side. And it was a, an opportunity to put up and shut up. We were at Ellis Park against Gauteng. There aren't many teams win at Ellis Park. And you, do you know what? We play a sport that lends itself to individuals to have a very special moment. And indeed, it was a special moment. It changed my life. My strength has always been broken field play. And I always remember the ball getting hacked through to Neil Jenkins. And prior to him picking it up, I looked up and there was a back row forward and a, a hooker in front of me about 35 metres away. Uh, we were close to our quarter. And I actually called for the ball prior to, to Jenks picking it up. And he threw it to me straight away. So the first bit is planned. I am going towards these two and I am backing myself to go around the outside of these two. Having done that, it's, the rest of it's a little bit of a, you know, weaving my way around. There's a lad who actually covered across the fly half, I think it was the fly half, yeah who slipped on his backside when I cut inside. But the funny thing about it all was, you know, if you watch that try, when I cut inside, Jeremy Gusco nearly got tripped up by him. I, I could have passed to him. I could have passed to him. And when I scored, he actually said to, uh, said to me after the game, you, you should have passed. I should have passed. And I actually, in years to come, in years to come, have always said, listen, that was my moment. You had your moment a little bit later on in that tour, which he obviously did. But my wife has always said to me, I don't get this. I really don't get it. You went on one tour, scored one try, and you got one speech. Get over yourself. We were asked right at the beginning of the tour, how did we want to be informed whether or not we were playing in the first test? And we decided that we wanted a letter under our door that was going to post, be posted on the morning that the team would be announced. And then, upon receiving your news, it, the onus then was on the player who hadn't been picked go and congratulate the player who had been picked. I thought it was a marvellous decision. It was it was hard, don't get me wrong. I had to go up to Yian Evans and say to Tate, oh, really pleased you picked lads, good luck. But that's what we decided to do and we did that. And then of course, Yian got an injury and I got selected for the, the, the second test, you know, in front of 70, 80,000 people. And we were actually second best that day. Uh, they scored three tries. We hung in on the game, you know, as a result of our resilience. And Neil Jenkins, who was phenomenal, just continuously slotting over those penalties, uh, leaving the opportunity for your man, Gusco. But then we also recognised we'd another, we'd another game to play, we'd another test. And actually, what a great 
way to finish a tour by whitewashing them. And we went to Ellis Park, of course, for the third test. And we actually played some of our best rugby in that test. Uh, better than the first two, really. But it was a great game, it was the third test, but we lost it. But it also, at the end, was was a little bit flat at the end, but it was also recognising that we, we, we'd done what we'd set out to do, which was win the series and we'd done it. There's nothing like it, you know, bringing together the four countries. And, you know, the biggest thing I've recognised, and I didn't recognise it in 97, and perhaps importantly, there weren't as many supporters in 97 as what there were in 2001 and then 2005, and then it's getting bigger and bigger. As a player, if you could just see outside the changing room and be perhaps in a bar with all the supporters and just get how much it means, the fact that the four are there as one, and there's nothing like it. I find it very emotional, actually, that the camaraderie of the four that come together, it's just amazing.